world of ours heading into Labor Day weekend here in the USA holiday I'm not really sure what uh, what it's for but uh, it usually means it's the end of summer anyway guys I want to uh, talk about something that comes up a lot in the comments uh, in videos whenever we're talking about steroids or it just comes up in general and it's it's a really good question and I think it deserves a really in-depth response and addition with you guys so I'm gonna go over my points first the question is why steroid users lie and there are a few few reasons for sure so I'm gonna go through those and then I'm gonna to get to your comments and questions and we'll go from there um, so first of all steroids are illegal uh, without prescription in the United States anyway prescriptions are getting much easier to get for TRT Doctors will prescribe you testosterone if you have a legitimate need for it. If you're insufficient in your own production, uh, you can. I've heard Deca, I've heard Anavar, I've heard a couple other things, but they're not going to give you alone Equipoise, Dianabol, Anadrol, Halotestin, Winstrol, Primbol. They're not going to give you a range of steroids. Uh, growth hormone you can get from life extension clinics a lot of times too, but. Generally speaking, steroids are illegal, and nobody wants to admit that they're doing something illegal, right? Um, so that's the main, that's a one reason. <clears throat> it's not the main reason, I don't think. I don't think most steroid users are worried that the law is going to come crashing through their door because of uh, admitting to using steroids, but you never know. Uh, Legal Muscle, a book by Rick Collins, great, great book. Uh, goes into all, all kinds of stories like that. They're true stories. Now, the main reason I believe most steroid users lie is because once you admit you're on steroids or once somebody knows that you're using steroids or even that you've used them in the past, maybe you've used them in many years, all your hard work, all the training, all the eating, all the rest, all of that is negated. It doesn't matter now because the drugs did all the work in the minds of you know most of the people who have never used steroids, who are, aren't aware that you still have to put in a, a good amount of work to look really good. But I know, you know, even personally speaking, I have that reaction. Once I find out someone's on drugs, I'm like, well, they're on drugs. And, you know, I know better, but still that's my immediate subconscious reaction is, well, well, obviously they're on drugs. So that's why they look that way, you know. And I've said this many times is the way you look is mainly determined by genetics, unfortunately, because genetics can't be changed. So... It's, an, it's a, an unpleasant reality, an inconvenient truth, as uh, Al Gore would have said, that you're born with genes for height, eye color, hair color. Obviously, you can change your eye color and your hair color pretty easily, but muscle bellies and stuff. So there are a lot of people out there with really good genetics who will look better without steroids if they put in a few years of good training and eating than everyone else would, except for, uh, you know, a few other genetic freaks who use all the drugs in the world. So like I say, I say this all the time. I look pretty good. I don't look, you know, I don't think I'm like the greatest Bible in the world. Believe me, guys, I know I'm not. But I'm saying some of you guys could never look as good as me, no matter how many drugs you took. Some of you would never even need one drug and you'd look 10 times better than me because you have superior genetics. I'm just using me as a, as a weird example because I'm somewhere in the middle of between regular person and a uh, you know, freak. I'm not, I'm not either one. I'm somewhere on that continuum. Um, next reason a lot of people don't want to admit to using steroids is because there is this huge stigma that if you use steroids, you're a bad person. And it's really strange because you could admit to using pretty much any other drug. You could say, well, I snort cocaine every day or I shoot heroin or whatever. And a lot of people will say, oh, well, that's, you know, you're an addict. It's not your fault. Uh, you're a victim. But as a steroid user, you're using these drugs to enhance your performance, basically in the gym, because most of you guys aren't professional athletes. You're not in the NFL or, you know, doing anything like that. Mainly it's used to enhance our appearance. It's the steroids are used so we our muscles are bigger. We hold less body fat. We look better. It's pure vanity. It's just an aesthetic thing to look better. So it's strange that steroid users are judged so harshly for using drugs, performance enhancing drugs to look better when there are a million other things, uh, primarily women, but more so, a lot of men are doing them these days to look better. You know, men get hair transplants, uh, hair plugs. I'll probably need those in a few years. You know, women get the lip injections, the, the fillers in their face, 
uh, facelifts, Botox, all these things to look younger, to look prettier. Breast implants have bigger boobs. Butt lifts have a bigger, rounder butt. Liposuction to suck out the fat. <clears throat> Gastric bypass surgery. Lap band surgery to, to limit the size of their stomach so that they they lose the weight and they can't regain it again. You know, there's, a, there's a, uh, so many ways that people alter their appearance through surgical procedures, primarily. Um, and there are even other drugs that are being used by other people, but it's not looked upon. Steroids still have this really, really bad reputation because you're a che cheater. And I just did a video last week, you know, and I was questioning who are, who are steroid users really cheating? Because unless you're in a, a competition where, where drugs of all types, performance enhancing drugs of all types are banned, you know, who, who, uh, who am I cheating? That, that's a good question. When I use steroids, am I cheating you because you're not using them? No, you could use them if you wanted to. You choose not to use them. I'm not stopping you. Nobody's stopping you. You know, if you choose to stay natural, that's great. I'm proud of your decision. You're going to be healthier. You're going to save a lot of money. You won't ever have to worry about getting arrested. Nothing like that. You don't have to worry about you know, my, my, my source, my gear source dried up. I have to find somewhere else to buy my gear. You won't have to worry about any of that stuff. So be happy about your choice. Be, be content with it. And you don't have to worry about it. But yes, steroid users are looked at by a lot of people as bad. You're a bad person if you use steroids. And who wants to be judged harshly? Who wants to be looked down on just for a, a choice that's really none of, no one's business? Um, that's the next thing I want to get into. It's, it's none of your business who's using steroids and who isn't, generally speaking. Here's a good analogy. Um, Dave Lieberman, great promoter out of Ohio, puts on some awesome contests. Also a collegiate national bodybuilding champion. I only bring it up because... When I, when I use a cool quote or something, I don't want to take credit for it. Years ago, he told me this like 25 years ago, maybe 30 years ago. So when people would ask him, do you use steroids? He would come back with a question. He'd say, do you masturbate? And they'd be like, what? They'd be shocked and horrified. He's like, well, that's, that's a very personal question, right? You didn't expect that. But you're asking me a very personal question you expect me to answer. So it's none of your business who uses steroids and who doesn't. Unless, you know, there's, there are certain situations we'll go into, but generally speaking, what you do with your body, whether you decide to use recreational drugs, performance enhancing drugs, you know, if your sexual, your sex life, that, that's a good, that's a good analogy because that's none of anyone's business. If you're a swinger, uh, if you're a guy and you like your, your girlfriend or wife, I don't, but I'm saying to strap, to put a strap on and bang you with that, you know, you we don't all have to agree with your, your lifestyle choices, but it's none of our business. You're not hurting anybody. And steroid users aren't hurting anybody by using steroids. So, you know, a lot of times <clears throat> I didn't like lying about it. So I would, I would deflect the question uh, in the early years of my steroid use. I would really just, I didn't want to, didn't want to admit to it. And I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't like lying. I've always, I feel very uncomfortable lying. It's, it's, it stings. So yeah, that, that's another reason why steroid users lies it's none of your business and they know you're going to judge them harshly. You're going to say, well, that's, you know, you're all, you're all drugs. That's why you look so good. So there's, there's really very few reasons for people to be open and honest about it, except now <laughs> the only reason I can see why a lot of people are open and honest about their stories is because of social media, because it gets them clicks and views and follows. And if you're having, if you have a YouTube channel and you talk a lot about steroid use and your own steroid use and you recommend you give doses and cycles out to people. People eat that shit up. They love that. So that's one case where steroid use has uh, come out of the closet, so to speak, because it does it does gain a lot of uh, interest, especially from the younger crowd. Um, so here we go. Last reason I'm going to go into, and this is the one where I, I do have issues with. People lie about being on steroids because they're trying to sell you something based on the fact that they're not on steroids. So somebody will claim to get these great results from a training program they're selling, a diet program they're selling, an exercise gadget, some weird supplement, um, and they're you know the the real the real <laughs> the real reason they look that way is obviously they if they look really good they have great genetics in the first place, and then you add steroids into that and the, you know somebody with great genetics who takes steroids is going to look phenomenal, so. Especially if they're good looking, you'll buy whatever they're selling. You Maybe you won't. Maybe you're not that naive. But there's a lot of people that will. And this is a point that I see people get so upset about. They say, well, 
bodybuilders, you're, they're on steroids, but they're in these supplement ads for this supplement or that supplement. That's not right. They're, it's a fraud. They're liars. They're, it's a, they're cheating us. They're trying to get us to buy this product. Well, look at the bigger picture. Advertising in general, man. Um, I've seen this infomercial. You guys know who Christy Brinkley is. She was a supermodel back in the, in the 80s. She was married to Billy Joel. She's about 70 years old or close to it by now. Looks phenomenal. Looks phenomenal. She has an infomercial. She sells some like face cream or something. And so she claims she's had nothing done to her face. It's just she rubs this cream that she wants you to buy for 50 or 100 or 200 bucks. I don't know how much it costs. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. You know this. It's she's had fillers. She's had a lot of work done medically on her face, but she's selling this cream or a potion lotion to a lot of gullible women out there and they'll eat it up because a lot of women don't have the money for what she has to have done. They don't have money to get a facelift and maybe they don't even have money for Botox and fillers and things like that. These are thousands of dollars, but they see this and she goes, well, I've, I did it all with this little jar. It's a hundred bucks, you know, order now. And they do. And people buy that shit like crazy. I even see it with the they sell all these male enhancement products, you know, test boosters, GH boosters, whatever. And they'll show some older guy, you know, white hair, beard. And it's very clear to me he's on TRT, growth hormone. I know the look. It's not attainable with just some over-the-counter tribulus or whatever the hell is in these things that they're selling. So that's that's a case where, yeah, I do take issue with them lying about their use or, or not acknowledging it because they're giving credit to some, some product and they're trying to scam you. They're trying to take your money. At least with bodybuilders and supplements, they do take those supplements. Is this product responsible for the way they look? Of course not, but at least they actually take it. In a case of, uh, you know, JLo selling some little cream or Christy B or, you know, they, in a lot of cases, I don't think they use that product themselves. They're just making millions of dollars off of it. They're not even getting the results from the product. So, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why steroid users will lie. And there are no, <clears throat> there aren't many reasons for them to be honest and forthright about it, except, like I said, in this day and age, especially a lot of young guys, they really want to know all about steroids and how to use them. And they want to get results quick. So if someone comes on as a YouTube channel and says, here's what, here's how great I look, here's the steroids I take. And, you know, it's, it's crazy because people have this uh, entitlement mentality these days with the pros and even YouTube, anybody that they see looks good. They'll ask them outright in their message. They'll, they'll put it on. They'll leave it in the comment section for everybody to read. You know, what's your cycle, bro? And it, honestly, it doesn't matter what their cycle is because they look that way because yeah, they're on drugs, but it's not like they have some special magic cycle that's going to give you the results gave, that gave them. And you're going to look like them. You're not going to look like them. You're going to look like you. You'll be a bigger version of you, but you know, the steroids that, that this guy uses don't necessarily have to be the ones that you use. It, basically all steroids work. They're all, they're all effective. It's not, there is no magic cycle. There really isn't. Um, all right, man, I'm going to, I'm going to get to some of your questions and comments now. If I can pull this up, I'm sure you guys have had a little bit to say about this one. Sorry if I have to look up when I do this and you can see up my nose. I probably have some hairs up there. I need to trim. Okay. So pumped up. It's really nobody's business. Yeah. I said, you're not hurting anybody uh, unless you're trying to sell them something of yours and you're claiming that you got the results drug free and you're being, you know, you're being that dishonest. Yeah, that, that's wrong. But otherwise, why do you need to know? That was pumped up. Kalakuta Tuidimal says, simple answer. You take steroids. It's, he wrote steroids. You guys, it's OI. Get it right, guys. Please, please spell steroids right. Simple answer, you take steroids and whatever you achieved, even naturally, is immediately eliminated. It's awful. Yeah, there is this prevailing belief now, um, and it's really a recent phenomenon that you can't get any results. You can't get any bigger, any stronger from your starting point without drugs, which is bullshit. God, I've known personally, I've seen thousands and thousands of people. Did, did they look like pros? No, but they got much bigger than they were, much stronger than they were. Zero drugs involved. Guys, it's it's. I, I feel sorry. I really feel for this generation because if you have that limiting belief from day one that you can't do anything without drugs, 
it's going to stop you from ever accomplishing anything without them. You're going to feel like I need to be on drugs or else I can't build even a quarter inch on my arm from my starting point. I can't get one pound stronger on my bench press. It's sad. It's really sad because, you know, you're capable of more than you think you are. Hard work, eating right, you know, obviously the results are always better with drugs. They just are. But that doesn't mean you still can't get very significant results without drugs. So many people have and continue to. You know, the, the majority of people in gyms that you see lifting, they're not on steroids. And they're all bigger and stronger than they were when they started working out. Next. Ah, Ron, how to break, break plateau. Just an outline. Uh, I got to do that. That's a different video. I, this isn't like an Ask Ron. But generally speaking, in a case of plateau, uh, I'll give you the quick, quick answer and then move on. Take a break like a whole week off of weights, and then come back with a completely new routine, completely different from whatever you've been doing. Different exercises, different rep ranges, uh, different rep speeds. When you do things like that, it, it typically gets you past the plateau. Uh, let's keep going. Billy Bob, at a certain age, I think it's healthy to use some form of testosterone booster. Well, I'm not even into testosterone boosters. I think if you get to an age where your body has stopped producing sufficient amounts of testosterone. And that's, you know, with most men, that starts around 35, 40. If you're very, very lucky, you have plenty of testosterone into your 40s and 50s, but that's rare. Most guys will see a decline as they get into their middle age years. And there's nothing wrong. You know, women, they lose estrogen as they go into menopause. And they've been giving women estrogen for many, many years now. And nobody cries about that and says, oh, that's terrible. But if a man who loses his, his main hormone, testosterone, estrogens for women, it's still looked down upon by a lot of people that, that we want to just replace and be at normal levels. I'm not talking about, you know, grams of gear to try to get huge and jacked. I'm just talking about enough to look good, feel good, you know, not be, not have things like uh, fatigue, depression, low sex drive. And, you know, you just want normal testosterone levels. That's why TRT, when a doctor prescribes it, they're only going to give you about 100 to 200 milligrams of testosterone a week and no other drugs. Maybe they'll give you a, an aromatase inhibitor if they feel you need it, but they're not gonna give you tons and tons of drugs. They just want, they're trying to, and they, they check your blood work. They keep you, they wanna find an amount of test, a dose that will bring you into the, the high normal range. You know, something like seven or 800 for uh, total testosterone, nanograms per uh, deciliter. Uh, <clears throat> you have great hair on, well, Thanks, Ella. Says Armin says you have great hair run despite the, te the testes and trannies. I I've said this in the last couple of videos. I am starting to lose. I have a little ball. It's balding back here. It's thinning. It's starting to recede here. But I have four brothers. There's, there are five brothers in my family. One younger than me and three older. Yeah, that's five, right? <laughs> yeah, Stevie, me, Dana, Roger, Daryl. So there's five of us. We all have the same hair loss pattern, and I have the most out of anyone. And they weren't blasting Trent and Decca and all that stuff like I was. So I honestly think it's genetic. But thank you. I'm grateful to still have this much hair. And I don't want to be bald, believe me. I would make a very, very creepy, ugly-looking bald man. It wouldn't be cool. Uh, Gregory Elise, IFBB Pro from Canada. It always amazed me how athletes are treated so differently than Hollywood actors. Yeah. That's a huge scam you see all the time. All the time. Actors get in shape really quick for movies. We see us. I'm not going to, Derek with more plates, more dates. He's made basically a YouTube career out of this, exposing them by saying what he thinks they're on. So he'll show you who's the guy that plays Thor. I don't know. Anyway, it's some actor that, that gets in great shape. He'll show you pictures or videos of the guy, and then he'll try to speculate as to what the guy's cycle might be. He's probably probably close to it. But when actors when actors get in shape for a movie, it's it's a lot of steroids. It's I'm not saying a lot. They're not using as much as like a pro bodybuilder, but they're using cutting drugs. They're using growth hormone. They're using clenbuterol. They're using things like uh, Test, Deca, Anavar. You know, these are people that don't work out as a lifestyle. They're not bodybuilders. They don't live this life of training and eating healthy every day. They might take three or four months at the most before uh, a movie where they're going to be shirtless the whole time, you know, shooting guns and swinging swords and things like that, fighting. They want to be in awesome shape. They hire these trainers, and these trainers know, I only have fun with this guy to get him looking great. Of course, you need, you need steroids in a situation like that. But then later you'll see all these magazines, Men's Health or whatever, they'll come out with so-and-so's workout for the movie, 300, so-and-so's workout for this Marvel movie, 
or here's their diet routine, or here's the supplement they use, and it's all bullshit because I'm not saying they didn't do those workouts and everything, but there's nothing special about that workout. There's nothing special about the diet they followed. Every one of us who lives this life looks at that and go, I eat like that every freaking day, and they're making a big deal out of it like it's some mir miraculous shredding diet. Anyway, so that's a huge scam. And, and I think a lot of people are aware, at least we all are, we're aware that actors use drugs to get in shape for movies, and I don't care. I don't, they're not cheating. You know, unless they're trying to sell me something based off that, or their trainer is, then that, that's cheating, yeah. When they're, when they're saying it was uh, some special workout or supplement or diet when it was actually, they were on plenty of drugs too. But yeah, Greg's right. Actors get a pass. And, you know, it's okay. You want to see this guy look great. You know what? Even if they don't look great, they could use CGI. To, like in 300, everybody had the greatest abs in that movie. There was some awesome CGI going on there. <sighs> Let's see. Trouty McSquire. I agree with Pumped Up. As long as you're not competing in Natty Feds, it's none of their business, yeah. Yeah, if you're in a natural federation, if you're competing in a natural federation and you're on drugs, yeah, you're a scumbag, obviously. Like, I mean, that's that's cheating. That's a legitimate. That's the look. That's the definition of cheating, right there, basically. Uh, Nick Blevins says, when I pick my daughters up from school, all the kids yell "roids." Sixth graders, lol, and all the moms can't stop looking and smiling. Drives my wife crazy, lol. Yeah, they get. I get that. I get people yelling that out. Usually, they yell it out of a car when. They're driving by, I do run, run after the car. But, you know, juice head or steroids or, you know, sometimes they'll say uh, Arnold or, you know, whatever. People are people like to throw their two cents in. But you know what? I am on steroids, so when they say that, it's not like I can, I can say, no, I'm not, you bastard. But even when I was in my 20s, I didn't, I started when I was 27. I built a good amount of size. I was fatter. It, it wasn't the same look, believe me. But I built a good amount of size, and I was very, very strong in my 20s before I started steroids. Certain exercises, I was stronger than most guys on drugs. Just, you know, I had good leverage for, like, overhead pressing. I was a really good squatter. Just certain exercises I was really strong at. And a lot of people would whisper, they would ask me if I was on steroids and stuff. And I kind of took it both ways, uh, insult and compliment. I was like, how dare you? You know, I did it because I was very proud. I was a very proud natty, believe me. I was a holier-than-thou natty. I had to let everybody know I was natural. I looked down on steroid use and steroid users, even though I worked with them. I was I was already working in the media side of, of bodybuilding from the age of 21 on, on that ESPN show. But uh, it's a compliment too, because especially back then, because, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't so much uh, awareness about steroid use. So people thought I looked that good that I had to be on steroids. Like, hmm, well, I guess I'm doing okay. Um, esoteric fitness run is always on point. Not always, but I try. Sai, thanks for your input. Really appreciate it. Michael Williams, how long do you think it takes you to reach your genetic peak naturally? If you're doing everything right, if you've really got a handle on, um, you know, mind-muscle connection, you're not just lifting weights, you're really squeezing, contracting, getting a good feel in the muscle while you're training, getting pumps, getting sore. You learned nutrition. Your eating is on point. You know, you're eating multiple meals a day. I, I say like four to six meals a day. I go for five or six. Uh, you're eating well, you're training well, and you're getting enough rest. If you do that for between five and 10 years, I think you will have achieved most of the gains you're ever going to get without drugs. That being said, I know I, I hear all, every time I, I say something like that, somebody will post, you know, I'm 55 years old, naturally, I'm still making gains. And I have to scratch my head because what kind of gains are you making? If you're 55 and let's say you're training at, I don't know, like 16 or 18, like most of us, I was 14. You, you, you can't be gaining all the time or else you'd be like a thousand pounds ripped. So what kind of gains are they really making? Or they just think they're making gains? I don't know. But I think about five to 10 years of doing everything right, you're going to max out naturally. Not to say that you couldn't put a little bit more on as years went by, but it would be just negligible. It would be like, you wouldn't even notice it, I don't think. You'd barely notice it. Uh, let's see. Calix Rose, Western society demonizes masculinity. That's why steroids are illegal. Great point. Great point. Um, it used to be a man's world. And, you know, it's a good thing that the world isn't so... Uh, how do I put this? It's a good thing that women aren't treated so poorly. And they have uh, better rights and they're, they're equals. But at the same time, I've seen this crazy shift where um, people don't... people. People look down on the male gender. 
it's bad to be male. Like they, they don't want little boys playing with fake guns anymore. They don't want them doing any kind of roughhousing or wrestling. You know, they're, they're eliminating sports like football that are too violent, too, too dangerous. Um, yeah, masculinity is, is really being demonized in general in this world and muscles and strength and power and vitality it doesn't get more masculine than that. So if a man wants to use drugs to be more quote unquote manly, bad man, bad, bad, bad. Yeah, I mean, great point. I, I totally agree with you on that. Uh, happy advanced 300K subs. We're, dude, we're stuck at 299. I need a thousand more subs. Yeah, come on guys. Tao Tao Liang, how to do that after, to, if I work? I don't know what you're referring to. You're talking about or eating? I don't know, dude. Yeah, obviously, if training training like a bodybuilder, especially eating five, six meals a day if you have to work. It depends on your job, obviously. Some jobs you really can't. Some jobs you can't eat that often. You, you might have to go many hours without any kind of food. It's, you know, I'd say find another job, or if you can't, I don't know what to tell you. It's, 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 it's uh, very demanding. The eating, training is tough enough. And especially if you have any kind of physical job, I don't know how those guys do it. You know, if you're like moving furniture all day or doing landscaping all day or contracting, physical labor, and then you have to go to the gym. I know it's a lot of people out there do it, but man, I take my hat off if I had a hat to those guys because I couldn't do it. I'd be like, I'd be wiped out. Hell yeah, dude says I'm on TRT for since two weeks. I want to add something, but have to keep blood work clean every four months for the doc. What compound do you suggest? Um, well, you wouldn't want to use anything like DECA that's going to stay in your system a long time. Uh, if you really want to, uh, you know, there's plenty of guys. I'm on, I'm not on doctor. I was on doctor prescribed TRT for a few years before I just took matters into my own hands because it was getting more expensive. And I just said, Ugh, and I got tired of going to the place. The parking was a nightmare. And anyway, um, orals. Uh, I don't recommend that you stay on orals pills for longer than 30 days, but they're in and out of your system very quick. Any oral, Anavar was a weaker one, D ball, Turinabol, Anadrol, uh, they're all in and out of your system pretty quickly. Uh, you could use things like tranacetate if you want to. I know I'm, Tren is very toxic, it's very dangerous, but I'm answering your question. What are compounds you could use? so that you could go back to your doctor in a couple months and they're not gonna show up in your blood work. So he says, hey, I'm not giving you TRT anymore because you're using all these other steroids. So you wanna look for anything with a short, short ester. Uh, orals are all short ester, they go through you very quickly. The tranacetate goes through you very quickly. You definitely don't wanna be on like DECA or Equipoise. Those things will linger in your in your system for, you know, I've heard, I've heard DECA cases where it was detected in people's blood for over a year after they stopped using it, which is insane. The metabolites were still detectable. Uh, I hope I answered that right. But, you know, if I didn't, I'm not a steroid expert. I know a little bit. Look up things with short esters. Obviously, test propionate, but that's you're already on test. But if you want to throw in more test, you know, you could take more of any kind of test. And as long as it's a, a few weeks away, stop at a few weeks away from when you go do your blood work, you'll, your levels will be back down to normal. You don't want to go in while you're blasting. Obviously, the doctor will he'll cut you right the hell off. DBK. Oh, wait. Hang on. Oh, yeah, dude. Chase, 2850. Do you really believe Jay Cutler took hydroxycut for the whole year to win the 2009 Olympia, as he said in the magazine? People believe that hurt their bodies because of that. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, he was getting the product for free. I, I don't know why he wouldn't use it. Um, did he take it for a whole year? I, I, I wouldn't recommend anybody stay on any fat burner for a year straight. That's insane. It wouldn't even work that long. Your body would, you know, downregulate. It would get accustomed to it. Uh, you know, I think six, eight weeks on any kind of fat burner is is a lot. A uh, year, I can't even imagine it would be effective. And yeah, I wouldn't recommend being on anything like that for uh, that extended period of time. DBK, I'm 24. I've been training for six years and feel maxed out and gained little bits now. You might be. I mean, six years, you might be maxed out. Um, you need to try different training methods too. I should have said that. Because a lot of times you think you're maxed out, but if you change something, different exercises, different rep ranges, a lot of people will train only in, you know, I've heard like four to six reps. A lot of people only do like six to eight reps. And I've just said to people sometimes when they've come to me like that, I said, why don't you try, I know this is crazy because you're all about six to eight reps. Why don't you try 12 to 15 reps on everything for like a month? 
just for the hell of it. You're not gaining any bigger anyway. You have nothing to lose. And they do it. And a month later, they go, dude, I put on like five pounds of muscle. And, you know, I'm not a genius, but a change like that, that generally shocks the muscle. You know, I love that phrase, shock the muscle. But typically, if, if, you, if you change things up drastically with your training uh, and, you know, look at your nutrition and everything, if, if you might not be eating enough, you really do need to be eating about every two to three hours from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. It's a lot of work. It's the eating. I always say the eating is the hardest part of all this because it's every day. You either have a meal prep service that you're paying or someone's cooking for you. you got to cook all that food yourself. You got it takes time to eat it, takes time to wash the dishes, and you know it's 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 very time consuming. It's it's like another job, the eating. Um, oh, tell tell yeah, that's what I was just talking about the eating. Yeah, it's it's a lot of work, and not all of you have jobs. You know, I work from home. The only times I can't really eat when I want to eat are when I'm away covering a contest for MD out of town somewhere because I'm busy working. I'm in the I'm in the press pit up front covering the contest. I can't say. Everybody stop the contest. I got I got to eat now, you know. But, but most people most of the time I'm able to eat my, you know, I eat five meals, five solid meals in one shake a day. And I sip on a shake while I'm, when I get up to pee at night. It's a lot of work. And not everyone has a job that's going to you can't break away. Maybe you could have a shake. You know, if you don't have time to eat a meal, like I I, I talk to a lot of uh, medical professionals, people that work in like the ER uh, or people like firefighters, people that sometimes they just they just there's no time to eat. But if they keep a shake handy, you know, like if either mixed up in a bottle or the MRE types, 30 seconds it takes to drink one of those if you have access to it. And it's better than nothing. I recommend food, 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 not shakes and bars. But if you can't have a, a solid meal, a shake, I would put a shake over a bar. I would take a shake over a bar any day. A shake and maybe if you have time to have like some nuts with it or an apple, it's way better than skipping a meal. At least you're getting the protein in. Uh, you could throw carbs in there or eat some carbs with it, like I said, or some healthy fats, like some nuts. Uh, PT, was Tampa and Texas judged by the same judge this year? Just curious. I wasn't in Texas, so I don't know. I was at Tampa. We almost went to Texas. I almost went. Uh, Hector was there for us, but I, I didn't get to go. David Keller, professional athletes in America are put on a pedestal for achieving top-level performance, but that extra what it takes is then demonized. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like that Jack Nicholson uh, line from In the Line of Fire. Was that the name of the movie? No, I got the. I have the movie. I have the movie completely wrong. But you know what I'm saying. You know that movie with Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson, where he said, "You can't handle the truth." You know, you want this spectacular, stellar, inhuman performance out of these people, but you don't want them to have any chemical assistance. People get very upset when they find out these superstar athletes are on using drugs to enhance their performance. But at the same time, they want to see a level of performance that's not possible without drugs. You can't have it both ways, unfortunately. But people want to be delusional and think, wow, I can have a 350-pound lineman sprint up and down the field like a freaking bunny rabbit, like a greyhound, naturally. Nope, nope, nope. Go look at old films. You know, sometimes ESPN puts up the classic. Look at football. If you ever look at a football game from the, from the 60s, even the 70s, the men were much smaller and much slower. It almost looks like slow motion compared to what you see now. And obviously there's been huge advances in training, techniques, nutrition, supplementation. There's been a lot of advances that make these people better athletes, but it's also a lot more drug use too. But people don't want that because that tarnishes their heroes. Like that whole home run thing years ago with McGuire and who was it? Barry Bonds. I don't know. Remember the home run thing? Mark McGuire and some other guy. Was it Sosa? Sandy Sosa? Yeah, you know, people got so upset because he was on Androstenione. Dude, you want to see these guys hit a baseball like a mile, okay? But then you don't want them... <laughs> you want to see people do things that aren't possible without a chemical assistance. But you don't want them using chemical assistance. You know, can't have it both ways, you people. Come on now. I was waiting for a Michael Horn question. <laughs> Poor Mike, man. I refuse to make like Michael Horn videos. So many people out there... You know who you are. You make these clickbait videos because you know there's always this fascination with, is Michael Hearn natural? So let's see what this question is. I bet that's what it is. Do you think the likes of Michael Hearn is natural? We'll be interested to think it's possible. Is it possible? I don't think it's impossible. It's very, very unlikely. It's not impossible. 
I have seen, you know, there's, there's, I use this example all the time. There's, there's such a wide range of genetic gifts and, and traits and mutations. You know, we had that guy a hundred years ago named Robert Wadlow. He was eight foot 11 and three quarters. Poor guy died at the age of like 24, I think, but he was almost nine. He was that far away from me, nine feet tall. That's impossible, right? How can a human being be almost nine feet tall? How can we have humans over eight feet tall? That doesn't sound possible, but it is. Mike might be some rare, rare genetic freak who can look that good without steroids. I don't know if he is or not, do I? I don't even want to speculate because I have no idea. You know, my gut reaction would be, he's, I, I, if I just saw him and didn't know anything about him, I'd say, oh yeah, well, he's on, he's on drugs. That's, that would be my immediate reaction if I knew nothing about him, that that physique. Um, but you know what? The whole fascination with Mike thing, it, it's, it doesn't, uh, you guys are wasting your mental energy and time because you could take all the drugs in the world and you're not going to look as good as Mike. You're just not. He's a genetic freak. Jeez, I remember that kid. I say, kid, he's my age. I'm, I'll be 52 in a couple of weeks. I'm pretty sure he's already 52. But I, I remember him, you know, when I first came up to California, I was 21 and he was 21. And I saw him at the natural, some organization called uh, ABA. They put on a show, was it the Natural Olympia or something? No, I think that was just like the Natural Cal. He won, and he was already a big, big guy. He's like, what, 6'2 or 6'3? He was competing at like 240 as a 21-year-old. You know, I think uh, he walks around in great shape now at like 270, something like that. But yeah, I, I have no idea if he's natural. I don't even care, you know, un unless unless he's in some natural federation and beating everybody, and then I might be like, hmm. Now I, now I need to know. But otherwise, I don't care. Um, a Few Good Men. That was the movie. Thank you. In the Line of Fire was Clint Eastwood and John Malkovich. Another good movie. I can't believe I'm getting my movies mixed up. I'm supposed to be a movie freak. Uh, let's see. Uh, Calix Rose. Why are drugs patented 50 years ago so expensive? Well, if you're talking about steroids, you're, you know, you're not getting them from a pharmacy or anything. Drugs are pharmaceutical drugs are expensive as, as f. I can't say the f word on YouTube, I guess. But man, have you seen how much drugs cost? You know, most of you, your insurance covers. Uh, just an example. My sister had uh, hepatitis B, and she was cured by taking. I don't know if it was interferon or something like that. It was like five thousand dollars a dose. I have an older brother, Daryl, who's uh, in remission from cancer right now. I can't remember the name of the cancer, but. He had to take a drug and he was having issues with his insurance company because they messed up and they weren't covering it for, for a month or two. It was like $10,000 a month for this one pill that he had to take. I think he had to take it daily. But prescription drugs in general, are, they're super overpriced. That's why these pharmaceutical companies are worth billions and billions of dollars. The profit margins are insane. Um, but what you're, if you're asking about steroids, you know, most of us get them off the, somewhere off the black market, you know, the trend or whatever. You know, a bottle of... A bottle of tests, say, off the black market can be, run you anywhere from 40 to $100. It's depending on the markup and whatever, but um, maybe even more. But why are they so expensive? Because, you know, it's the market, whatever the market bears. If Anybody who's selling something will get, uh, will charge as much as they can and still sell plenty of product. So if I can sell a test for $100 a bottle and people will pay, why would I, why would I charge $50? It's all money. This is a business. It's all business, guys. It's all profit. There's, you know, there's no charity in this. So I don't know if that answered your question, but it's not like there are generic versions, you know, like you can get like generic, I don't know, Lipitor, generic Viagra, usually through these Canadian online pharmacies cheap, but there's, there's nothing like that for steroids that I'm aware of. NPP. Oh, there you go, Nick. Yeah, that was, uh, we talked about short ester drugs. If you're trying to add something to your TRT, for in the short term so that you can still go back to your doctor in a couple months and get clean blood NPP, which is nandrolone. Uh, it's DECA, but it's a short, ver short ester. But you know what? I don't know about the esters. I don't know. It does have a much shorter half-life, but I wonder if the metabolites. So I'm not going to sit here and say for sure you can safely take that and it won't pop up on a drug test because I don't know. Maybe and maybe not. Maybe one of you guys knows for sure. I don't. I certainly don't. Uh, Calyx Rose, I swear to God, when I was a kid, I thought muscle tech was going to make me big, dude. I, I was, I'm older. So I remember, uh, I was dating my wife in 19, we started dating at the end of 89. I remember in 1990, 
the only year we were engaged, we were uh, we weren't even engaged. Anyway, she bought me she bought me Cybergenics. The Cybergenics kit it came in a box. It was like 120 or 150 bucks back then. This is 1990, so this was 31 years ago. So in today's dollars, that'd be probably I don't know, 400 bucks. Oh uh, man, it was garbage. Everyone everyone now everyone agrees now that the products Cybergenics products were just crap. There was nothing remotely effective in them. You know, they had all these little, you had to take this out of an eyedropper and take this pill. And they made it seem really scientific and complicated. So you felt like you were taking drugs, but it was garbage. It was a scam. You know, they made so much money off of it. Like, pff, dude, um, where the hell was I going with that question? Uh, yeah, we all thought that. But you know what? Some guys are very salty about that. They're like, you know, I, I got ripped off and this and that. But you know what? There's also the power of uh, the placebo effect. You take these things, and I trained my ass off. When I was projects, I made really good gains, and it had nothing to do with the products because I was just, in my head, it was like, I'm going to gain now. So I would train hard, and I really believed in it. I really felt like I was going to get bigger, and I did get bigger and stronger. No, I didn't blow up like a, like a, I would have on steroids for sure. I did not, but, man, so I, I, I'm not, you know, I don't, I'm not bitter about that, and I blew a ton of guys. I, I'm sure I blew way more money than most of you guys on supplements back in the day. Because like I said, I was natural for all those years till I was 27. I started buying supplements when I was about 17, 18, 17 or 18, I guess. So there was a, there was a lot of, a lot of bunk products back then. Believe me, we're talking about the late eighties and into the, into the nineties. There was a lot of garbage crap out there. Boron, smile X, you name it. We had all kinds of scams going uh, have you ever reached out to see if you can get Bob Paris on your show? I did. He was not interested. He was polite about it, but he's, he's very bitter. He does not, um, have any love for the bodybuilding industry. Uh, he has his reasons and he was not interested. I don't know if somebody else could reach out to him and they'd have better luck than me, but he, he turned me down. So yeah, it is what it is. I can't get everyone. I try, you know, I have a good success rate with getting interviews, but not everybody, not everybody says yes. I do get turned down. Uh, Let's see, a few good men, yeah, a few good men. What kind of gains are achievable on, yeah, McDiesel970, what kind of gains are achievable on 120 milligrams of TRT? So if you're taking enough, that, that sounds like a very, uh, very modest conservative dose of test that most doctors would be very comfortable prescribing to someone with lower test levels. So it's probably he's giving you enough, your, he, maybe your doctor's a girl, a she, I don't want to be sexist, though. but... If you're in high level, high normal test level, uh, high high normal test levels, you'll make decent gains. You're not going to make any extraordinary gains like you would a blasting test, but you're being safe. You're being healthy. You're doing it the right way. You're not taking any chances or any unnecessary risks. If you took 1,200 milligrams of you know test sip or sustenon and 800 milligrams of Deca and 800 milligrams of Trend, you blow the hell up, but you'd, you your health would suffer. You'd be risking your heart, your kidneys, your blood pressure would go up. Well, there'd be a lot of bad side effects. So you do see much better results with larger, although there is a point where you don't, see, it's a point of diminishing returns after a certain point, but higher doses will give you better, better results than very, very low doses. I, I often tell people, try to, try to find the least amount of steroids that you can use and still get results because then you're going to be spending less money, but more more importantly, you'll be taking less of a risk with your health if you can take the least amount of drugs necessary. How do you find that out? Well, you can't find that out if you start blasting a ton right away. Start out very low, see how you do on that. If that's not doing what you want, add a little bit more and so on. But I don't I don't believe in starting out with these mega blast doses. It's It's a waste because you'll never know if you could have done the same gotten the same results with lower, lower doses and been safer, you know, with your health because look at all the deaths we've been having, guys. This is real. This people, this, I'm not saying they're all attributed to steroids, but steroids are dangerous. I've been very fortunate. I do stay on top of my health, but I'm very, very fortunate. I don't advocate, you know, being on steroids all the time or using high doses because a lot of you would not be so fortunate. You wouldn't be so lucky. I would hate, I, I don't know how these people you know, just so freely say, yeah, you should take a gram of this, a gram of that. I would feel like shit if, you know, I heard later or, or somebody came to me and said, you know, I'm in kidney failure because I did the cycle that you said was a good cycle or uh, I had a heart attack because I did what you told me to do. I would feel horrible. I don't know how some of these 
coaches, gurus, just YouTubers that talk about steroids. I don't know how they look in the mirror if they know people have been hurt. They're hurting people, you know. Maybe if they're saying at the same time, use this, but you're taking chances. You're taking a huge chance and you need to get your blood work done and blood pressure and heart scans. And, you know, I hope they're doing that, but I don't think all of them are doing that. Uh, let's see. Here we go again. I think to look for in a good protein bar. What? <laughs> good protein bar. I mean, I would look for low sugar. I don't like to have a lot of sugar. You want a high protein? You know, look to see where the protein's coming from. Because uh, a, lot, like a lot of times they just throw in like soy protein, collagen, some cheap ass protein. Look for something with like casein or whey protein as one of the ingredients. Um, I, I have the, I use the, I eat, use. I eat the bars from Redcon. They're pretty good. They're very delicious. Uh, I wouldn't want to eat like, when I, when I cover the shows, I eat too many of them because I can't, I can't, I can't eat meals. I don't have time. I'm sitting there taking pictures and doing interviews. I don't have time to eat like I want to eat. So I eat a lot of bars on those weekends. Uh, but the Redcon bars, the MRE bars are the ones I, I really rely on. Otherwise I'd be starving because I, I, I can eat a bar while I'm, I can throw half the bar in, type, 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 take picture, take picture, throw another bar, you know, but I can't sit there and with a shovel, with a, <laughs> with a fork eating chicken or rice every two hours. I couldn't do that. Um, Jose Canseco, that's who, I couldn't remember, and I read his book too, Juiced. That was a good book, if he wrote it. I don't know who wrote that book, probably not Jose. Uh, hell yeah, dude, I'm on Sustanon for TRT. Wow, I, I don't see that given out very often. How long does it keep to clear from my system if I raise the dose for mini blast in between blood works? I don't even know if it's the same for everybody. I don't think everyone clears the metabolites and the half-lifes at the same rate. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to mess you up for your, your test to make, you know, say something and you're going to come back and you said I could take this and and I would still pass my drug test and not get in trouble. And now I'm in trouble, you a-hole. So I don't want to be that guy. I, uh, I don't I don't even want to speculate. Jehan Amarulia. Ron, my chest takes the most time to recover than any other muscle. Why do certain muscles take time to recover? Is it the fibers? I don't know, you know. I remember... Uh, Certain body parts on me used to get a lot more sore than they do now. My legs used to stay sore for like a week after I trained them when I was younger. I remember that. Chest. Some people, their chest never gets sore. Like, my chest doesn't get sore that much anymore. Uh, honestly, I don't know why, why some body parts, unless you train, you're able to have a better connection with them and you train them harder. Or maybe you do certain movements with more of a stretch component. Or you're doing something different for those body parts that you don't do for other body parts. I honestly don't really answer that. It's a good question, though. Chad Brewster, I bet my life he's running Trent most of the year. Uh, are you talking about, if you're talking about O'Hearn, I seriously doubt he would run Trent most of the year. Trent is very toxic. When I use Trent, and I do use it, I don't like to be on it for more than four weeks. I just feel it's, it's a very powerful, very effective steroid, but it's very toxic. It's very dangerous. It's among the most dangerous ones you can use, especially for an injectable. And I just, I don't, I'm not comfortable being on it. I can't imagine Mike, if Mike had been on high amounts of dangerous steroids like that, he would have had some kind of health problems by now. He would have run into some major, major health issues. So I, if he uses things, I'm, I think he's very careful and he's probably very conservative with his doses. If he uses, I'm not saying he does, but he certainly couldn't be blasting tons and tons of steroids, you know, year round all these years. He would have his body would have shit the bed on him by now. Trust me, guys. Nobody's nobody's immune like that. Nobody. We're all humans. And I should, unfortunately. It's good that we're all humans. Greg Kovacs, Muscle Tech. Yeah. Hello, I'll hustle. You wanted your money's worth. Dude, I totally remember Cybergenics. I bought three kits of that BS back in 88. Dude, we all did. We all bought that shit. That's why that guy had... He was worth like a... I think the company was worth like a half a billion dollars at one point. I had Franco Santorio, Santoriello on Ronline. He was like their major, their major guy, the, the, the face of the company, his before and afters. And he said it was complete bullshit. You know, before picture he hadn't trained in like months. And, you know, they used, they used his pictures and his images to, to scam a whole generation of young guys. I was one of them. D Short, thanks for answering my question on Bob Parrish. Jamie wouldn't want to be interviewed. Yeah. I mean, I would love to interview him. I think he had one of the greatest physiques of all time, the greatest classic bodybuilding physiques of all time, up there with, like, 
Frank Zane, Serge Nubre, Muhammad Mako, Makawe, uh, you know, Robbie Robinson. Was a, he had a beautiful physique. He was a great poser. Um, but I, I don't think... He wrote a book. I never read it. I always meant to. It was called, I think it was called Man in the Gorilla Suit. Where he talked about uh, you know, how he bodybuilding was an obsession, an unhealthy obsession. He got past it. Because he's normal size. He's been normal size. He's athletic. He's, you know, he's genetic, genetically gifted. He's got to be about 60 by now, I would think, if I'm almost 52. He's got to be at least 60, right? But I'm saying he's he's never going to be a small guy. He's always athletic looking. Um, S. McG. I don't get how people can blame coaches for deadly steroids. First, steroids aren't healthy. Second, coach doesn't force people to use them. Uh, it's the pro, this, you know, there's been a big controversy, especially with women lately, because unfortunately we've had a couple of them pass away, that coaches are giving out these very, very dangerous protocols, not so much with steroids, although they are, but with the fat burners and uh, the diuretics at the end, especially, especially are deadly because you mess up with a diuretic and you're dead, like you're dead that day. You can be dead within an hour, whereas steroids, they're not going to kill you today or tomorrow or next week. The effects, the long-term effects of steroids could kill you. You might die young, heart, kidney, you know, you, your life could be cut short, but you're not going to die like now. Whereas diuretics, you take too much of the wrong of a diuretic or whatever, and you could die right now, unfortunately. But yeah, blaming coaches, if you're putting, if, if you're an athlete or a competitor or would-be competitor, and you're putting all your, your faith and your trust into a coach, and, you know, you're assuming that they know uh, how to keep you safe, and you're assuming that that's a priority for them, and maybe it's not. It is for a lot of them, but some of them, they they only they they feel their job is to get you results. If you want to win your contest, they'll tell you exactly what you need to take to give you the best chance of winning to look your best. It may not be very healthy at all. It may be very dangerous, but you know the way they're looking at it. You didn't hire me to to make you healthy. You hired me to make you win. If you wanted to be healthy, you want to do things on your own, stay very healthy, you could have done it all yourself. But you came to me, who's an expert on chemicals and how they're used, steroids, fat burners, diuretics, all that stuff. And I'm telling you what to use in what amounts for the best cosmetic effect. So you will look the best on stage. Now, obviously, uh, you, we, this, is a, this is a huge point of argument. People debate this all day. Is it the coach's responsibility? I don't even want to get into it. It's a whole other subject. Uh, Let's see what else we got. Philip Rowe, would you advise guillotine bench press or upper chest? Using lightweight and feel the upper chest really good. So what he's talking about, the guillotine bench press, Vince Aranda popularized it. I don't know if he invented it or not. It's, it's Mar, all the way to your, to your neck. Uh, I, I, when I tried it years ago, it, and I, my shoulders were healthy back then. They're, I would never even attempt it now. It, I could feel the strain in my rotator cuff. It just did not feel right. I don't think you need those for upper chest. Any type of incline press is good, but a, a movement that I found that's really, really good. Uh, so you know the supported T-bar row with the pad? Okay. I kneel in front of that, put plates on it, and you know the, the post where you put the plates on, I have my hands like this. I put pictures of it on my Instagram. So here's the bar, and you're pushing up at a very steep angle. It's almost like a 45 degree angle, but I feel that all on my upper chest. Give that one a try. That's an excellent exercise. Uh, landmines, I've heard it called. You see people doing it for shoulders, standing with the barbell, but I, I found this variation. Uh, my boyfriend, I think, I think he figured out in our gym. But yeah, the supported T-row, uh, but you're, sta you're kneeling in front of the machine or the apparatus, and you're pushing up on the bar with your hands like this, and it's this whole thing squeezes together. It's a great, great exercise. Uh, World Traveler says Michael Hearn is the biggest fake natty ever. Maybe. If he is a fake natty, he's the biggest one I've ever seen. You know, I mean, he's, this guy looks phenomenal. I can't take anything away from him. Uh, how do you feel someone starting a cycle at 41? I'd rather see you start a cycle at 41 than 14, I'll tell you that. Um, I think if you're at a place in your life like that, you're 41 years old, you're a responsible, mature adult, you know, you're probably not breaking the bank. You probably have some money by this point in your life, I would think, I would hope. Um, you're mature enough to handle any emotional uh, reactions you might have to the drugs, hopefully. Yeah, I think 41 is a great age to start. Now, people would say, well, it's too late to start. Well, no. If you've never used steroids, you're still going to get really good results 
from your first few cycles, regardless of how old you are. Would you get better results as a 25-year-old than as a 41-year-old? Probably. Your body's younger and healthier, more resilient, and recovers better and all that, but you're still going to get really good results at 41. I would just say, like I say to everyone, do plenty of research, know what you're getting into, learn about the drugs, the side effects, the doses, uh, you know, the health concerns, what you need to be checking, your blood work, ultrasound on your heart, calcium scores, blood pressure, you know, stay on top of your health and, and you should be okay. As long as you're being reasonable and moderate and conservative about it, not doing grams and grams. Uh, World Traveler again, Micro Sheet is another. Uh, some more fake natty stuff. Oh, did it get retracted? Yeah, okay. So, Drum Pro Pogrom. <laughs> I'm not on steroids, I'm on TRT. Well, TRT is not on steroids. It, but a lot of people who are on steroids say they're on TRT. The term has become bastardized. TRT stands for testosterone replacement therapy. And that's exactly what it's supposed to be. It's replacing the testosterone that your own body no longer produces in substantial amounts so that you're at normal levels. So true, actual TRT, it's done through a physician, you know, either through your general practitioner or maybe you go to a men's health specialist or an endocrinologist. They will prescribe just enough and they confirm this with regular blood work to make sure you're in high level normals and no higher. Like I said, usually it's around, they want you somewhere around seven to 900, somewhere in that range. They don't want you any higher than that. Whereas if you're blasting steroids, you could have a, a level of 5,000. I think I've even heard like 8,000. I don't know what the highest end is, but yeah. But then there's a lot of steroid use. Guys on steroids will just say, I'm on TRT. Because the, the term got like so, so bastardized and misunderstood that I think a lot of people believe TRT means you're on a cycle. It means you're on steroids. It's not what TRT is supposed to mean. Uh, but yeah, and also I mean people who will be on steroids and they will tell you they're on TRT because that's acceptable because then you're not going to judge them as harshly. You're not going to get upset at them and look down on them as a bad, bad person because you're on steroids. Oh, you're on TRT. So that's another reason. Graflex, some famous pros who are steroid advocates seem to take pride in their low doses but don't want to hear about anyone being natural. That's the lowest doses there is. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's the dosage thing. People get mad or they, they think all these guys are lying when they say they're on lower doses. Some of them probably are lying, but they're not all. And these guys, there's another component that we've discussed before. It's some people respond so much better to steroids than others. I don't know why. It's probably more receptors. There's some, there's some scientific reason, I'm sure. But it's a genetic component where, like I said, there are average steroid responders. That's most people. There are some people that all they get... All they get are side effects. They just get like puffy and zits and they don't get much bigger at all. I've seen it. It's sad. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you get these few that are just these hyper responders. They just blow up. They take a little bit and they blow up. I know because I've, I've talked to a lot of these people over the years and they had no reason to lie to me because I didn't care if they used a million. I didn't care how much steroids they used. They were just, they were just lucky. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, you're mocking people. Let's see. Robert Bogato, awesome workout. Uh, for now, most of my life. Gain alone, thank you. I was mocking people who told me that. Huh? Protein bar. Why do I choose apples and nuts before bars? No, no, I have those with a shake so that it's more of a real meal because a shake is just liquid. If I just drink a shake, I'm hungry again in like 45 minutes to an hour. If I have a, a, you know, a half a cup of nuts or I have an apple with it, it... It fills me up. It's more filling, so I can go like a good hour and a half before I'm hungry again. But no, I would never just have apples or nuts. I would have a shake with apples or nuts, or I would have a bar. A bar is more of a complete meal, especially, you know, like the Redcon, the MRE bar. It has protein and carbs in it, so it's more of a meal. But yeah, I, to clarify, it's, it's a shake with apple or, and, or nuts. Shake with one of those. It's not apples or nuts by themselves. I never have anything by itself without protein. Everything I have... Is either solid protein source with it, like, you know, chicken, eggs, beef, turkey, fish, whatever, uh, with, with the carb. But I never have, I never have just carbs or just fats by themselves, never. Uh, guillotine press is good because I try using dumbbells and coming down, go for shoulder level and pushing up the weight, don't go for shoulder level. Yeah, I mean, if you want to do the guillotine presses, I'm not telling you not to do them. Go ahead. and If they work well for you, by all means, do them. I didn't like them. They haven't caught on. I haven't seen anyone do those in any gym I've been at in 
25 years that I can think of. I think it's just, you have to have a hell of a spotter because that bar's right over your damn neck. I just don't see the mechanical advantage. I don't see how you're hitting your upper chest. When, you're, when your arms are way up here, it just doesn't feel, I'm not able to activate my upper chest up here at all. I have to be down, you know, my elbows have to be down to get that full contraction of the pecs. Anyway, now we're about training. More plates. Drum program says, more plates, more dates, lies about doses without a doubt. I hate science worshipers and theory boys. Uh, does he lie about his own doses? Maybe, I don't know if he does. I mean, he's, I'll, I'll give him credit. Derek's making a killing on YouTube, a killing. Uh, and another, I've heard he charged like a thousand bucks to look at your blood work, so good for him. He's, he's killing it. <laughs> I can't hate on that. He's, he's hustling and he's succeeding. Half cup of nuts says 500 calories. Yeah, I mean, I can, I, I have a pretty fast metabolism, so I can get away with things that maybe people with slower metabolisms, not so much. You know, like if I have a female client, I, I do a very, I don't even want to say I do coaching. I don't want any more clients. Um, you know, they, they can't, a female would not, especially one who's trying to lose weight for competition, I would never want to see them having like a half a cup of nuts with their shakes. That's, they're, they're not going to lose any fat. They're going to, that's too many calories. He claims, okay, so drum says, Derek claims 200 milligrams builds the same as 600 milligrams test. He tells people what they want to hear. Uh, I I can't see how one third of the dose, a TRT dose, TR, 200 milligrams, would build the same amount of muscle mass as 600. I don't think 600 builds three times more necessarily. I don't think it's a it's a linear equation like that where you get X amount of muscle per X amount of milligrams of testosterone, but three times the amount of testosterone or any steroids is going to give you more results than one third the amount. Unless you're talking about once you get to the exorbitant ranges of grams and grams, then I don't think it matters anymore. You pass the point where you're going to see any further results and you're just wasting money and, and taking a lot more chances with your health. But a TRT dose, I've heard as high as 250, I think in rare cases 300, but typically a TRT dose of test is 100 to 200 milligrams a week. That's what a doctor will prescribe to you for replacement therapy. And you're not going to see these massive gains with it. You know, if you were very, very low test, it's going to make a big difference for you to have normal test levels. But if you have normal test levels, 200 is not going to do much for you uh, compared to 600. 600 would do a lot more for you. I'm not advocating that you do 600, 800, 1,000. You know, I'm just telling you. Um, Elias Miranda. SARMS product considered steroids. They're not steroids. They're not. Chemically, they're very different, you know, the structure, the molecule and all that stuff, but they, they do have very similar results to steroids. And Dr. Thomas O'Connor, who has a channel called The Anabolic Doc, he's done a few videos about the dangers of them because he's seen a lot of patients coming into his practice with health problems, this very similar health issues that you would get from steroid use. And these people have only used SARMs. So SARMs were, they were touted as this thing that would give you steroid-like results without any side effects and, you know, You've heard about when something's too, if something sounds too good to be true, it usually isn't. I think we figured out with SARMs, it was too good to be true. They, they are risky. They do have their dangers. They're effective. They work. And I think in, there are still ways you can buy them legally. There's People seem to still be getting them, but yeah, they're, they're not harmless by any means. Uh, drum Pogrom, thanks for time. Have a good day. Got to run. Great. Have a great Liberty weekend if you're in the U.S. d -shore, meal one. You're giving me your, your daily diet here, so I'm going to leave on that because uh, I'm not going to go into, like, diets for people, which i got to get going soon. JJ, hola, Ron. I'm currently doing 400 milligram tests a week for a while. I'm 55. I want to keep all the muscle. Took me 41 years to build. What are your thoughts? Uh, I'm on 400 year-round, and then there are a few times of the year where I bump that up and I add other things in. So stay on top of your health. Stay on top of your blood work, your blood pressure. Get your heart scans, your calcium score, and ultrasound. You know, this I, I've had uh, just a couple months ago, I had an ultrasound in my heart. Um, I had an MRI. Yeah, I stay on top of that stuff because if, if not, that's when you run into problems. If something's wrong, you want to catch it early rather than late, obviously, especially with the heart because the damage, you know, it's a cumulative thing. You get more and more blockage, more left ventricle growth, and you don't want to have to be dealing with that. Uh, tamoxifen, 
Lake Fork Giants, what do you think about running tamoxifen while on a test deck of D-ball cycle just as a preventative the whole cycle? Yeah, I mean, that was this, people do that. I, again, I've been very lucky. I don't do any, I don't run anything like that at all. Never. I don't do a Arimidex, Novidex. I don't do any of that stuff, and I've never got gyno. Just lucky, probably. Um, yeah, I mean, th those things, all those drugs have their own side effects, so if you don't need them, why would you take them? Yeah, I'm sorry, D Shark. I can't comment on your diet. It's just too uh, too much. I'm trying to get to too many questions. I, you know, sorry. <laughs> you ever dealt with bicep tendonitis? Yeah, yeah. You just have to be very careful. You know, find out what bothers it. Don't do that for a while. I've had a couple minor bicep tears. Luckily, they didn't. It wasn't tear. It was like a strain, like a very minor tear. I had to take it very, very easy on on back and biceps for a while and let it heal. Uh, yeah. Sergio is not doing the Arnold. I know that sucks. I wanted to see him. Hi, Ron. Do you use gear? Yes, I do. I say that all the time. Bodybuilders what love to lie what they're using in the amount. Yeah. For the reasons I went into in the beginning of the video. All right, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to X out of this. Get rid of the questions. Yeah. I'm going to get out of the questions, guys. And, and uh, wish you all, especially from the USA, a very happy, healthy, and safe Labor Day weekend. Hopefully there's some nice weather you can go out and enjoy as we're almost out of summer here in this part of the world anyway. Um, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, share the video, like the video, do all that good stuff. Appreciate you guys all watching. I'll see you next time.